What we see a lot is regional characteristics. Certain parts of New England, certain parts of the colonies did it one way, certain parts did it another way. You can see there's a little bit of similarity in the size of the proportions of the uh, um, Between this, uh, the John Chipman dust and the curly maple dust, kind of have a little bit more of a similar proportions in design of the interior where the Eastern Connecticut and London County desk in the center has its own design and proportions. Uh, but every cabinet maker was up to their own case, their own design. But the guy in Norwich or Colchester that made this desk didn't want it to look like the one that was coming out of Weathersfield or Windsor. And those are the three prime areas in Connecticut that we look at for design inspiration as New London County Weathersfield and Windsor. And one of the most important aspects of that is the shell carving on the interior. Um, but this is really is a great, very precisely carved, but kind of enthusiastically carved shell as well, as the standard kind of carved rays. It's similar to this shell from Salem, Massachusetts but it's been enhanced with little fluting on each ray and then this punch decoration that goes outside of the shell. And in addition to the carving of the shell, we also have regional differences in dovetails and the characteristics of the dovetails. This is really fine, almost equilateral triangles. Uh, that is a hallmark of New London County construction. Uh, and something that we do find uh, in our area as well, unusual, is that this bottom board is applied to the drawer side with little wooden pins. So iron was expensive, and I like to say these cabinet makers had more time than money. So they took the time to make all these little holes and inset every little wooden pin to hold that drawer bottom in rather than taking a few nails and just nailing it in place. So tiny wooden pins and lieu of nails. He used three nails, but then on three sides he made little wooden pins. Now, nails were expensive, as Kevin just said. They had more time than money, so it was easier for them to cheaper to, for them to make little wooden pins and make each one the right size than to go down to the hardware store and, you know, order a gross of nails, which, you know, cost money after all. So there's another example of them not having the money. Here's a very interesting sociological economic fact. Even though we're fighting a war against for our independence, we're still getting grass from England. You know, some things never change. In order to, we didn't have foundries yet here. So they if they were making furniture and it was, you know, 1773, 75, and things were getting up, they still needed grass to put on their, to pull their jaws and hinges and doorknobs and all kinds of stuff. And so business was, business as usual. And so, I mean, I always find this very fascinating that we, you know, supposedly hated England, but, you know, we were still doing business with them. Uh, so, you know, it, as there was a question about sizes. So, in antique, current antique desks, the smaller they are, the more valuable. The average size for a living room slant, and we call these slant front desks, they are not Governor Winthrop desks. That is uh, a misnomer. Got to get that out of your vocabulary. People call these Governor Winthrop desks. Not at all. They're called slant front desks. And so the perfect size is 36 inches width. So this one is. 36 and 3 quarters. This one is 39. And this one is 40. Okay, so under 36 inches, they become scarce. 35, 34, really scarce. 32, buy it. It's a, I mean, it's a, they're really rare. And so the smaller, because people love small things. If a desk gets over 42 inches, they become cumbersome, ungainly, awkward a lot of times. The bigger may not be better. 
So, and then the height of the lid is critical. The perfect height is about 31 and a half. Okay, so call it the low birds. And this one is 32. So this is, you pull up a chair if you want to work right at. It. If it gets 34, then you're writing at a desk that's up around your throat. And it's not real comfortable. This one is 31. So that, that height is little, an inch taller on here. And to some people, it would be amazing. It makes a difference. They can't write as well. And then this one is probably about the same. Yep, 31. So they didn't have law saying, you know, your desk has to be 31. They just figured out that 31 sells better. So there's, there's, there's an example of the better mousetrap works. 31 inch, 32 max. 33, eh, it's getting a little high. 34, again, you have to stand up to use it. 